Across the globe, predator-prey relationships take place on a daily basis. But few of these relationships are as unique as those of the animals featured in this film. For starters, the prey is also considered a top-level predator. But the predator preying upon that animal is like no other. Making this relationship even more unique is the fact that a fish is preying upon a mammal. Not only does this separate this fish from all other fish, it separates this shark from all other sharks. While white sharks have been known to feed on whale carcasses, also mammals, their primary diet during adult life consists of the pinniped family. While the details of this relationship vary from ecosystem to ecosystem, the predator-prey relationship remains evident. Several decades ago in South Africa, the white shark was heavily hunted. The reduction of its numbers caused an imbalance and the pinniped population grew exponentially as a result. Many years and thousands of miles later, a similar story was unfolding in Cape Cod, but with a twist. With all the people I've been talking to while out here, something I hear about quite a bit is that there was a disappearance of the sharks and then we, the sightings of them have started increasing since around 2009. Does that sound accurate to you? It does. It seems to be closely following the rise in the seal population. Uh, our seals have been protected and now that the population is coming back and coming back strongly, uh, the white sharks, which have also been protected since the 90s, seem to be making a, a resurgence in this region. Is that a total surprise for the locals, or did, are they aware of the history of the white sharks here? Uh, I think it's a bit of a surprise, though for many years we've had white sharks who've visited the area with a lot less notoriety. Uh, every season we had one or two white shark reports, uh, but then something seemed to change back in around 2008, 2009, where the sharks tended to come much closer to shore, much more frequently, and it seemed like their hunting pattern really was definitively for the seals in our, in our neck of the woods. Could it be that in contrast to the South African scenario, this time it was the numbers of the hunted increasing that led to the numbers of the hunters also increasing, almost as though nature was slowly trying to establish an equilibrium. So how important is the white shark? And what exactly makes it so unique? Genetic on number three, spot on position. People obviously ask the question, what happens if white sharks were removed? Does this cascade negatively throughout the entire ecosystem? Or simply does another predator come in and take the white shark's place? Personally, I don't believe predator substitution is an option for the white shark because if you look at its entire evolution, it is opportunistic, but it's a very specialist in the niche that it occupies. It's elevated its body temperature, its blood, so it, became, it can stay fast in these very temperate and cold waters and also specialized in eating seals or pinnipeds, marine mammals. And there's very few predators that have these type of adaptions that could come in and substitute the white shark. So yeah, I think it would be quite drastic or catastrophic if the white shark did disappear from this ecosystem. South Africa, Australia, Mexico, Cape Cod, and California all share the similarity of being home to the white shark. But the similarities don't end there. Also found are dolphins, other sharks, whales, a variety of pinnipeds, and even surfers, all of whom have found themselves within the jaws of the great white. But the West Coast claims the distinction of being home to the white shark's largest natural prey. Fully grown male elephant seal is about four and a half thousand pounds. They're huge pinnipeds, but there definitely have been instances where white sharks have killed fully grown elephant seals. 
there's a shark out there, a female, fully grown white shark called the Cadillac. I think it's a 20 footer, it's a really big shark. And uh, the whale watch captain told me how he saw the Cadillac kill a fully grown male elephant seal and chop it up like a fish stick and eat it piece by piece. Uh, we had a, an attack on an elephant seal uh, not too far away from the boat, seeing a 18 foot white shark consume just a huge elephant seal with a very dramatic uh, uh, event, um, having the nose come above the surface and eyes out and the smell of the blood slick and the sound of the crunching was just wild. But just because they can kill a fully grown elephant seal doesn't mean that's their first choice. Historically, the white sharks at the Farallon Islands prey upon first, second, third year elephant seals. They're smaller, slower, they're more naive. It's really all about energetics. They don't want to expend more energy than they receive killing their prey, so they go for the smaller elephant seals. The white sharks at the Farallons are predominantly mature sharks. So after a shark is over 13 or 14 years of age, it stops eating fish and it starts eating marine mammals. Elephant seals are about 60% of the white shark's diet at the Farallon Islands. So the other 40% is California sea lions, stellar sea lions, and harbor seals and fur seals. White sharks are very important to the ecosystem at the Farallon Islands because they are attracted to the weaker, sicker animals. Those are the ones they predate upon. It means the gene pool of the pinniped population at the Farallons is purer, full of healthier animals. So the, the white shark population is very important to the ecosystem. So clearly, the white shark plays an important role as a uniquely adapted fish that hunts marine mammals. But it's not the only apex predator that hunts marine mammals. In fact, this predator has turned the white shark into prey. Does this reduce the importance of a white shark in an ecosystem? Orcas infrequently feed on elephant seals as they are a transient population of killer whales that are passing through California waters. There's no population of transient killer whales that stay in one place in California to predate on elephant seals. But not everyone is happy with the increased number of participants in the food chain. In Cape Cod, reports of seals being found with bullet holes in their heads echoed the days in South Africa when fishermen tried to reduce the seal population by taking nature into their own hands. Man and seal do compete for some of the same food sources, but concerns over the seals negatively affecting the local fishing industry screams of irony when one witnesses our definition of sustainable fishing. It's true that the gray seals have made a comeback as a species, but the term population explosion is misleading when considering their numbers were reduced to nearly zero and took many years to grow to a grand total of 5,000. Not even enough to fill one high school gymnasium. The seals aren't the only ones receiving a mixed review regarding their comeback. While the increased sightings of white sharks is exciting for many, fear-mongering and sensationalism still plague this vulnerable species. In some countries, the very government that claims to protect the animal actively hunts it when spotted too close to beaches in use by humans. But what beaches aren't in use by humans? And do those beaches belong exclusively to our species? Nature strives to establish balance, but this requires us to share the planet with our fellow earthlings. To not fear what we are unfamiliar with. To live with the earth instead of just on it. <laughs>